Good evening. It's great to be here today talking about an issue that is so important to all the people I speak to across the suburbs of Bentley. A functioning transport system is about getting people where they need to go. Parents collecting their kids from school, our neighbours commuting to work, and families getting to the football on the weekend. I'm certain we will hear lots of great ideas tonight about how we can improve transport across Bentley. But I want to make sure that we don't lose sight of the things we can achieve in the life of the next term of Parliament to help people get on with their lives. In a modern society, all we have, so all of us have lives that are busy, and the time we spend travelling to places we need to go is wasted time. It's time we could put to better use so we can return to things that mean so much more in our lives. Time with family, time on our hobbies, and time for ourselves. In order to achieve this, the public discussions about transport need to be all-encompassing. Transport doesn't exist in isolation. We need to recognise that external factors like population growth, planning rules, technological change, commuter demand, car parking, energy costs and community safety all influence how our transport system operates. As a result, we need to make sure we are constantly investing, managing and maintaining these things alongside the transport system itself. So how do we achieve this? More importantly, how do we keep a city of 5 million people moving when it is growing at over 140,000 people per year? Over the last 12 months, the State Liberals have announced a number of measures which will help our city cope with that challenge. On roads, we've announced our plans to remove traffic lights at 55 of Melbourne's worst bottlenecks. By sinking one road thoroughfare beneath another, a process called grade separation, we will ease the daily traffic grind so motorists can get to their destinations sooner. To date, we've announced 35 locations around Melbourne and Geelong, with 20 more to come. Four of these sites are located in Glen Eyre itself. The key locations include South Road and Warrigal Road, South Road and Nepean Highway, North Road and Nepean Highway, and Glen Hartley Road and Nepean Highway. By removing the traffic lights at these sites, our congestion busting plan will get Glen Eyre moving again. If you have an intersection you would like to see changed or fixed up, we'd love to hear from you, and I'd like to speak to you after the session today. In regards to train stations, we've announced a long overdue upgrade to Patterson train station. Our plan will catapult this station into the 21st century with modern lighting, toilets, shelters and seating. It will also improve the visual appearance of a station which has long needed a fresh coat of paint. In regards to community safety, improving conditions on the trains and buses has been a top priority for me. After four year long years of neglect, the Frankston Rail Corridor has become a haven for vandals, drug dealers and opportunistic criminals. The situation has become so bad that locals and the media now refer to the area as a corridor of crime. <laughs> My $340,000 neighbourhood safety plan will put an end to that. It will put more eyes on the streets by adding to the CCTV cameras that we have and will ensure that our crime hotspots are reduced and eventually eliminated. These measures, combined with a range of others my party has announced on law and order, will ensure that commuters using our buses and trains can feel safe again. Ensuring mobility improves year on year requires careful consultation, planning and foresight. In terms of my short term priorities, I want to make sure we do the following. Ensuring frequency matches consumer demand. More services on the right routes at the right time. Optimising bus routes for maximum passenger appeal. The more people we have on buses, the fewer cars we have on the road. Making smarter decisions about how we operate our trams, buses and trains. Whenever we expand or create a new service or piece of infrastructure, it is critical that we don't end up hurting the people we're seeking to serve. Keeping up the maintenance regime, when people often call for improvements in infrastructure, they're usually talking about ensuring the existing assets are working better. And there's no better example of that than the smart bus sign at Bentley train station, which was broken for years 
and was only fixed after my campaign to get attention drawn to it. Now with it working, commuters are increasingly using the bus on that corridor. We must do what we can also for overcrowding on trains. People constantly tell me that the trains are more crowded than ever. We must do more, whether it's changing the design of the train itself or increasing the frequency. Either way, with Bentley being as far as it is from the city, this is a critical area to fix. Over the long term, we also need as many ideas as possible to ensure we keep Melbourne moving. While modifications to our transport system are typically incremental, we must always be thinking intergenerationally. The train lines we use today were built a century ago. We cannot afford to be a generation which is defined by electoral cycles. As your representative in this seat, I will always be thinking about the future. I'll be thinking about your needs for tomorrow, next year, and next decade. Under a Liberal government, we will make sure that your priorities are our top priorities. One thing everybody here will probably agree on tonight is that time spent commuting is time that is lost. The time it takes on a train to travel to Flinders Street Station from Moorabbin is time not spent with your children. Time spent in traffic turning right onto the Pean Highway is not time spent with your friends. And time wasted waiting for a bus on Centre Road is time you will never get back. Our challenge is to make sure our transport system gives people their time back. With your help, ideas and guidance, we can start taking those steps the day after the state election. Thank you.